UFC welterweight champion Bilal Muhammad isn't giving serious consideration to a fight with UFC featherweight champion Ilya Topuria, who recently sparked a heated exchange with Muhammad over social media. Topuria, who holds the 145-pound belt, took exception to Muhammad's comment warning him to watch what he says regarding lightweight champion Islam Makachev. Topuria responded by suggesting his ultimate goal of becoming the first three-division champion in UFC history, which would involve winning titles in featherweight, lightweight, and eventually welterweight, Muhammad's territory. Muhammad, however, sees Topuria's challenge as an amusing but unrealistic pursuit, particularly given the vast weight difference. I think that dude's got Napoleon syndrome or something, Muhammad joked to MMA fighting. Short guys always act like they're tough. Muhammad explained that his initial comments stemmed from his respect for the Dagestani fighters, noting their reputation for not tolerating trash talk. They don't play the trash talk game, it's real life to them, he said, hinting that Topuria might be out of his depth in poking at fighters like Makachev. Though Muhammad enjoyed exchanging jabs with Topuria, he doesn't believe the featherweight champ is a real threat in his division. Topuria's priority, Muhammad suggested, should be his upcoming featherweight title defense against Max Holloway at UFC 308, which is already a huge challenge. If Topuria wins, he'd likely still have to contend with a step up to lightweight, and it would be a long road to reach welterweight, especially given the necessity to gain around 25 pounds to realistically compete. While the back and forth adds some entertainment value for fans, Muhammad sees it as little more than talk, especially given Topuria's mean level trash talk. The welterweight champion doesn't consider it a serious threat to his title reign but doesn't mind having a bit of fun with the exchange. UFC CEO Dana White is reportedly planning major changes to UFC rankings heading into 2025, aiming to improve transparency and accuracy by reducing reliance on media-driven rankings. White's dissatisfaction with the current ranking system has been an open topic, as he believes the current media voting process is flawed and creates significant inconsistencies, especially in contentious areas like pound-for-pound -pound standings. White disclosed to TNT Sports that he's been working on solutions, mentioning a potential collaboration with Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg to explore the integration of artificial intelligence in the rankings process. We've literally been working on it all last week and I will have some answers on that soon, White said, adding that Zuckerberg's expertise with artificial intelligence could provide the innovation needed to improve UFC rankings. The collaboration between White and Zuckerberg is not new, the two have reportedly shared an interest in using technology to advance various aspects of the sport. While initial discussions revolved around a potential showdown between Zuckerberg and ex-owner Elon Musk, focus has now shifted toward improving operational aspects within the UFC, with rankings taking priority. Though White hasn't given a specific timeline, his comments indicate that he's serious about a significant overhaul, potentially with artificial intelligence helping to assess fighter performance based on more quantifiable metrics. The goal is to eliminate the scandalous inconsistencies White perceives in the current rankings and make the system more aligned with fighter skill and accomplishments. UFC President Dana White has confirmed that Islam Makachev has his blessing to move up to welterweight in pursuit of double champion status, a move that could be among the most significant shifts in the sport. Makachev's ambition to jump weight classes follows his successful lightweight title defense against Dustin Poirier at UFC 302. In that fight, Makachev clinched victory via fifth-round submission, extending his reign as lightweight champion. Though his path to a welterweight debut remains conditional, primarily due to his teammate Bilal Muhammad's current pursuit in that division, Makachev's move to 170 pounds is looking more plausible than ever. For now, Makachev's immediate focus is on a lightweight title defense in a rematch against Armin Zarukyan, who he previously defeated by unanimous decision in 2019. 
That bout marked Zarukyan's UFC debut, and since then, the Armenian contender has developed into one of the top fighters in the division, making him a formidable opponent. Scheduled for UFC 311 in January, the fight promises to be a high-stakes clash, with Makachev's future in the welterweight division likely hanging on the outcome. According to Khabib Nurmagomedov, Makachev has already signed a contract for his next bout, though the matchup remains unannounced. Dana White's support for Makachev's potential move is significant, given that he has sometimes hesitated to allow champions to switch divisions before clearing out their own. White's endorsement suggests that he sees Makachev as a strong contender for the welterweight title and views him as worthy of the chance to join the rare ranks of UFC fighters who have achieved double champion status, including Conor McGregor, Daniel Cormier, Amanda Nunes, and Henry Cejudo. Though White does not yet view Makachev as the UFC's top pound-for-pound -pound fighter, his approval underscores Makachev's value and potential. Makachev's move, however, depends heavily on the welterweight landscape and particularly the outcome of Bilal Muhammad's fight with Shafkat Rachmanov at UFC 310 in December. If Rachmanov, a rising star in the division, defeats Muhammad, Makachev's path to welterweight could open up, paving the way for his entry into the 170-pound division. Conversely, if Muhammad wins, the situation could become more complicated, as Makachev and Muhammad share a close training history. Makachev's respect for Muhammad, coupled with the logistical challenges of training partners competing for the same title, may create additional obstacles. From a broader perspective, Makachev's potential move has historical significance. Following in the footsteps of his coach and cousin Khabib Nurmagomedov, Makachev has dominated the lightweight division, defending his title against top-tier competition and extending the legacy of Dagestani fighters in the UFC. Habib's own dominance in the lightweight division set a standard for Makachev and Abdulmanap Nurmagomedov, the legendary coach and visionary behind the Nurmagomedov dynasty, had long seen Makachev as a successor to Khabib. Now, as Makachev looks to make his mark on a second division, he is positioning himself to carry forward Abdulmanap's legacy. If successful, Makachev could join an elite group of UFC fighters who have held championships in two weight classes, further enhancing his status and legacy. Double champ status would not only place Makachev in the pantheon of UFC greats but could also elevate him to a new level of global recognition and influence. While questions remain, particularly around how he will handle the size and power advantages of welterweights, Makachev's team believes his wrestling, striking, and strategic abilities will translate well in the new division. The next few months will be pivotal for Makachev. His rematch with Zarukyan is essential not only for defending his title but also for keeping his momentum intact ahead of a welterweight move. If victorious, Makachev could challenge for the 170-pound title in 2024, solidifying himself as one of the sport's most versatile and dominant fighters. Meanwhile, Fans eagerly await Muhammad's bout with Rachmanov, a fight that could either simplify or complicate Makachev's path forward. Whatever the outcome, Makachev's ambition, combined with Dana White's endorsement, has set the stage for one of the most exciting potential storylines in the UFC's near future. The UFC 308 light heavyweight bout between Magomed Ankalaev and Alexander Rakic might be in jeopardy, following concerns over a potential staph infection on Ankalaev's leg. A recent photo of Ankalaev sparked a flurry of online discussions, with many fans and analysts speculating that the visible symptoms indicate a staph infection. Staph infections are relatively common in combat sports due to the close contact training environments and can require anything from rest and antibiotics to more serious medical intervention, depending on the infection's severity. As of now, the UFC has not issued any official statement, nor has Ankalaev's team confirmed the infection or indicated how it might impact the upcoming fight. However, if the infection proves serious, it could lead to a delay or even a cancellation of the highly anticipated matchup. Fans and fighters alike are keeping a close watch, knowing that even minor injuries can escalate when not properly treated. Given that Ankalaev is a top light heavyweight contender, any delay or forced withdrawal could shake up the title picture in the division. For now, the matchup remains scheduled, 
but the UFC community awaits updates on Ankalaev's condition as fight night approaches. Former UFC middleweight champion Israel Adesanya has weighed in on the much-anticipated fight between Robert Whittaker and Kamzat Chimaev at UFC 308, set to unfold this Saturday in Abu Dhabi. Both fighters come into this clash with stellar records and high stakes, as the winner is expected to secure a shot at the middleweight title. Adesanya, who has shared the octagon with Whittaker twice and successfully defended his title against him, has offered a compelling prediction that Whitaker will emerge victorious by handing Chimaev his first career loss, and in dramatic fashion. The co-main event between Whitaker and Chimaev is one of the most intriguing matchups on the UFC calendar this year, not only because it involves two of the division's most skilled fighters but also because it serves as a potential title eliminator. The Australian Whitaker, a former middleweight champion, is renowned for his well-rounded fighting style, mixing high-level striking with a strong wrestling base. On the other hand, Chimaev, the undefeated star who has blazed through his opponents, has garnered a reputation for his relentless grappling and overwhelming pace, often overwhelming opponents from the opening bell. The stylistic clash between Whitaker's veteran experience and Chimaev's unyielding aggression has captivated fans and analysts alike. Adesanya gave his analysis of the fight on his YouTube channel, outlining what he believes will be a path to victory for Whitaker. Despite Chimaev's rise as a relentless force in the octagon, Adesanya is picking his former rival to withstand Chimaev's attacks early on and capitalize on the openings that may present themselves in the later rounds. I just think Rob is a guy not to be messed with, Adesanya began, underscoring his respect for Whitaker's fighting spirit and resilience. Look at his last fight, hopefully, people will remember who he is now. I think Rob will do it again, definitely not as early, I don't think so. I just think he'll catch him later on, but he has to weather the storm, I'm gonna go Rob with this one with the late finish. Round 4, this prediction is particularly interesting given that Whitaker is known for his durable defense and conditioning, traits that have enabled him to outlast dangerous opponents in grueling bouts. Adesanya believes that Whitaker's best chance lies in playing a patient game, absorbing Chimaev's high-pressure offense in the early rounds, and then taking advantage of potential fatigue or openings as the fight progresses. If Chimaev, who tends to start fast and strong, slows down in the later rounds, Whitaker could indeed find the chance to score a stoppage. The prediction by Adesanya is echoed by featherweight contender Max Holloway, who has also voiced support for Whitaker as the fighter most likely to end Chimaev's unbeaten streak. Although Holloway didn't specify the method or timing, he noted that Whitaker's skills and experience would likely enable him to navigate Chimaev's aggressive style. Their support comes on the heels of Whitaker's recent performances, including wins over Paolo Costa and Ikram Aliskarov earlier this year, where he showcased not only his striking acumen but also his ability to adapt to various styles. Interestingly, the bout was initially set for UFC Saudi Arabia this past June, but Chimaev was forced to withdraw due to illness. This delay may have worked in Whitaker's favor, allowing him additional time to train and develop a more nuanced strategy to counter Chimaev's explosive attacks. Chimaev's journey to this fight has been no less impressive, known for his ferocious grappling, Particularly in his early bouts, Chimaev is returning to the middleweight division after an impressive performance against former welterweight champion Kamaru Usman. With a perfect 12-0 record, he's a fighter who rarely leaves his fate in the judges' hands, often securing finishes in dominant fashion. His resume includes victories over Gilbert Burns, Li Jingliang, and Kevin Holland, each fight demonstrating his formidable power and ground control. For Whitaker, the key to victory, according to Adesanya and other analysts, will be his ability to keep the fight on the feet and leverage his striking prowess. Whitaker's diverse arsenal of jabs, hooks, and well-timed kicks could serve to neutralize Chimaev's wrestling attempts, forcing the unbeaten fighter to engage in stand-up exchanges where Whitaker may have the upper hand. If he can effectively manage the distance and resist being dragged to the mat, Whitaker's chances of securing a late-round finish grow considerably.
Former UFC heavyweight champion Francis Ngannou brushed off recent comments by UFC president Dana White, who took jabs at the PFL star after his dominant knockout victory over Renan Ferreira at the PFL's Battle of the Giants. Ngannou, who departed from the UFC and vacated his title in 2023, has since been a regular subject of White's post-event discussions. In response, Ngannou believes White is still bitter about the way things ended and can't accept Ngannou's decision to move on. Reflecting on White's comments, Ngannou said on Sirius XM, I think Dana's trying to make things up to buy good faith in the position he has lost. Dana has lost in this situation, and he cannot stand it. Bro, I won everything, I left. We've been apart almost two years, and the guy is still out there. Regardless of what happened, I'm not about him. Ngannou suggested that White's inability to make peace with himself is fueling his continued criticism, adding, what's the problem here? I keep doing my thing and rising as soon as I left the UFC. In any sense, I'm more than what I was. Ngannou also took to social media to address White's remarks, sharing that freedom isn't free, but remember that the benefits always outweigh the price. His follow-up tweet took aim at White's alleged tendency to manipulate the narrative to shift attention away from real issues. White has claimed Ngannou left for a bigger payday against less skilled opponents, even alleging Ngannou dodged a fight with John Jones out of fear it could impact his financial potential. White told reporters, Francis is all about the money. If he fought John Jones and didn't win, it would hurt his chances of making the money that he wanted to make. But realistically, his deal was bigger here if he stayed in the UFC. White added that he considered cutting Ngannou years earlier after two back-to-back -back losses and maintained that if Ngannou had stayed, he'd have made more than what PFL offers him now. Ngannou disagrees completely, pointing out that his last UFC contract did not meet his worth and didn't include bonuses he believes he was owed from fights with Stipe Miocic and Searle. Now I have made more money than I have ever made in the UFC. I would say twice the money that I could have ever made in my entire UFC career if I had continued in the UFC," Ngannou stated. He underscored that even if he'd made less in the PFL, it would be his decision, not White's concern. For Ngannou, his new chapter represents both financial growth and professional autonomy that he didn't have under the UFC's contract terms. While White insists Ngannou's exit was financially misguided, Ngannou stands by his choice, saying, why is he so pissed about me not making that much money? Like, come on man, live your life.